Good morning. morning. What a fall day this is. Crisp, keeps you nice and cool. Welcome to worship at the Federated Church of Norfolk. We welcome any visitors who may be with us this morning, and we are all invited to join together downstairs following the service for a time of fellowship and refreshments. Please refer to the announcements that are printed in the bulletin this morning. It is. Should I get closer to the mic? It's on. It's on. I'm challenged. Look at that. It's like a rock star. Better? Yeah? No? Yeah? I'll get real close. Good morning. (laughs) Anyway, everyone is welcome after service downstairs for refreshments uh, and fellowship. And please refer to the announcements in the bulletin this morning. Uh, The flowers this morning on the altar are given by Carol Hansel in memory of her grandmother, uh, Elsie Smith. The other flowers, which are absolutely gorgeous, as well as the ones on on the altar, are arrangements that were given by the Jones family after Charlie's funeral on Friday. We will bring these downstairs after the service, and we invite everyone to take a few flowers to bring home to enjoy the week in remembrance of Charlie. Now we are going to sing our opening hymn, which is Morning Has Broken, which is in your bulletin. stand. Please be seated. Now let us still our hearts and minds as we prepare for worship with the lighting of the candles. May the love of your heavenly Father blow like a breeze through your cares and the winds of eternity's calling lift you high 
to find vision again. Would you please stand as we uh, read the call to worship that is printed in the bulletin. God of our lives, you are always calling us to follow you, inviting us to new ventures, new challenges, new ways to care, and new ways to reach out and touch the hearts of our fellow travelers. When we are fearful of the unknown, give us courage. When we worry that we are not up to the task, remind us that you would not be calling us if you did not believe in us. When we get tired or feel disappointed with the way things are going, remind us that you can bring hope and change out of the most difficult circumstances. God beyond borders and great divides, we bless you for strange places and different dreams, for the demands and diversity of a wider word, for the distance that lets us reflect on the past and for a new ground where broken stems can take root, grow, and blossom. We bless you for the friendships among us and for the richness each one brings and the painful gift of freedom. Please be seated. Please join with me in our uh, unison prayer of invocation and the Lord's Prayer. The Spirit of God moves among us, binding us in covenant with faithful people of every time and place. The Spirit of God moves within us, empowering us to proclaim the gospel to all people. The Spirit moves through us, making us channels of God's love. As we gather to worship together, we open ourselves to the spirit of the living God, made known to us in Jesus Christ. Amen. It is in his holy name that we pray the words he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us for our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand as we sing the Gloria Patri. Please be seated. And now Amy Pepin, if you please come forward for the child in all of us. How many people have pumpkins in their yards right now? You do? Lots of pumpkins, huh? Have you cut any pumpkins out as jack-o'-landers yet? You have? All right, so here's a little story about a, a pumpkin that turns into a jack-o'-lantern. Let's understand it. The Pumpkin Patch Parable. 
See that big red barn and those rolling green fields? That's where the farmer lives, way out in the country. It's so far out, the streets don't have any stop signs. The farmer grew many different things in his fields. He grew tall green corn and big red tomatoes, long green yellow squash, and little green peas. People eat that stuff for dinner. Do you like vegetables? Kind of. Kind of. Right. Works. The best vegetables the farmer grows are pumpkins. They start out as flat oval seeds, almost as big as raisins. One hot June day, soon after school was out, the farmer planted his pumpkin seeds, just like he did every summer. The seeds disappeared into the ground in neat rows and grew there in the dark all through the 4th of July. Early one morning, a tiny green shoot quietly poked its way out of the soil. Soon, a long green vine stretched across the ground. From that vine, little buds sprouted into wide green leaves. The leaves spread out flat to catch the August sun. Someday those green buds would turn into big orange pumpkins, but not yet. The patient farmer waited and waited. The pumpkins began to grow. How different they all looked. Some were tall and lean, some were short and round. Some had lumps and bumps. All of them were pumpkins. October came and the last and at, came at last, every night grew darker earlier than the night before, and the farmer knew it was harvest time. His workers brought the ripe pumpkins. Which pumpkin would the farmer choose? The, pump, the farmer picked up one large pumpkin, taking great care. Pumpkins are tough on the inside, but break into smithereens if dropped. He washed off all the dirt, holding it tight. Next came the messy part. The pumpkin was filled with seeds and slimy pulp. The farmer had a special plan for his chosen pumpkin, so all the seeds and slime would have to go. Did you help clean out the slime and the seeds and the grossness? Yeah, messy. He slowly cut all the way around the top of the pumpkin. Gently, he pulled the stem. Now the farmer could look inside. Squishy, stringy pulp waited for him. Yuck. The farmer pulled out all that slimy pulp and wrapped it up in an old newspaper. Off to the compost pile, it went, never to be seen again. Then something really exciting happened. The pumpkin got a new face. The farmer carved a triangle for each eye. Pumpkins have eyes that don't blink or turn away. They see everything. He neatly made a little square for the nose and then carved a big, wide smile. The farmer put a small candle inside his pumpkin and touched the wick with a flame. Now that pumpkin glowed. Um, is it on? Well, sometimes it's on. At home it worked, but here not so much. You know what? Cover your hand. Cover your cover your hand with this. There you go. And does that work? The pumpkin on the porch shone brightly for everyone to see. When people saw the smiling pumpkin, they all smiled back. All the neighbors knew that once again the farmer had turned a simple pumpkin into simply glorious sight. In the same way, God the Father offers his children the chance to be made new, full of joy and full of light, shining like stars in the dark world. So when you think about carving your pumpkins, think about this. Open my mind so I can learn all about you. When you take the pumpkin's stem off and you can see inside, you're opening your mind. Take away all the sin and forgive me for the wrong things I do. That's when you clean out all the slimy, stringy things inside the pumpkin. It cleanses you. Pulp. Pulp. <laughs> Open my eyes and I will see you. It's the pumpkin has eyes. I'm sorry for turning my nose up sometimes. That's the nose. Open my ears so that I can hear you. If you have Pump, uh, if you carve some ears, then the pumpkin can hear you. Open my mouth so I can tell others you're here and let your light shine in this, as I do. Okay.
left and I need that. And I have another one in here because uh, there we go. All right, can everybody hear me? All right, all right, excellent. Thank you. Good morning again. <laughs> Thank you, Tom, for leading our opening worship this morning. That was lovely. Thank you, children, for lighting the candles and for paying such wonderful attention to that beautiful story this morning. <coughs> We come to our time of offering before God now, and we thank you for those who send your contributions in through the mail. You have the address of the church, so thank you very much for that. And I'm sure that all of you know that your offerings are used to continue the mission and the ministry of your church right here in Norfolk, as well as into the wider community and into the wider world. Is there anybody who here today that I have not met? Anybody just coming back? Anybody new? Well, good morning. Good morning. Anybody new or just coming back? Well, welcome to all of you. I am Reverend Dr. Mary Louise Gifford, and I am a retired minister in the United Church of Christ. And this is my third week here with the good folks here in this congregation. And it is my delight to be with you and hopefully um, share a message today that will resonate with all of you. So our morning offering will now be gratefully given. And similar to last week, I think we will have uh, something to look at here. After. After. Gotcha. <laughs> So we're going to hear some beautiful music. He is exalted. Uh, Chris and Tom Cleverden will be providing that muse for, music for us this morning. So our morning offering will now gratefully be received. Exalted on high, he is 
exalted, the King is exalted on high. Thank you so very much. So beautiful. Wonderful to have live music in our worship service, that's for sure. Gracious, holy God, we thank you that we are ready to accept these generous donations, that indeed they are made for you, for your church, for the ministry and the mission that goes on right here, not just within these walls, but within the far reaches of your entire world. May it be used to help those in need, May it be used to help those who are struggling. May it be used to help give relief and joy and comfort and show mercy to all your people in your holy name. Amen. Now we come to, oh, please be seated. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I get so lost in my own head. <laughs> now we come to a time of passing the peace with one another. So please, if you are able and willing uh, to extend a hand to your nearby neighbor and offer a word of peace, such as the Lord be with you, and as you receive, yes, stand back up if you like. <laughs> And may that peace also be with you. <laughs> Hi, sweetheart. Peace be with you. I know I have cold hands. Sorry, my hands are cold. And also with you. My, my granddaughter would love your sweater. She's into Argyle these days. 14, same oh, yeah, as your yeah. daughter. I yeah. Know, that's what I was yeah. She's all over the place. Oh, now, I know. Right? It's all Argyle. Peace be with back. you. Thank you. Thank Sorry you so for much. Not telling you there's a That's all right. It was piece. probably in the bulletin. I just didn't read it. Uh, you know. <laughs> Good morning again. Peace be with you. Thank you. Beautiful pin. Yes, you are. I saw you. <laughs> Peace be with you. Thank you. And with you also. And with you also. Yes. That's a gorgeous photo. Yeah. Who's the photographer? Just you. Very good. Beautiful.
Thank you. <laughs> I offer a word of thanks to Katie and uh, Nicole, I'm sure, for um, choosing that music, that beautiful music, to go with my photos. So thank you. Thank you. Isn't that one of the most beautiful songs ever written? You know? <laughs> It, all, it brings tears to my eyes. It really does. It's so beautiful and so beautifully played, Katie. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Catch my breath. <laughs> okay. Living in harmony, that's what we're talking about today. Pray with me, please. I know some of you have this, a copy of the sermon in front of you, so you see this little prayer that I put at the beginning. Pray it with me, if you would. God, please help us to set aside everything we think we know about ourselves and you, so that we might have a new and I'm going to turn this, yeah. <laughs> this. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I hear a sweet little voice out there. <laughs> Good morning to you, too, yeah. <laughs> By some people's standards, I would be considered an early riser. I set my alarm for 5.30 a.m., but generally I'm awake a little before 5 when the birds begin to sing. As they greet me in those moments before dawn, I am reminded to greet God each day. Before I get out of bed and even sometimes before I open my eyes, I say, Good morning, God. I've had a morning practice of writing for many years, and since COVID, I step down into my living room, and I sit in front of the picture window, which overlooks the sidewalk of my house. I live on a pretty busy street, so it's not long after I sit down with my first cup of coffee that the early morning walkers and runners come into my view. There is a woman, a particular woman, whom I've never met, and that she has been running by my house every morning for at least the last 20 years. Sometimes she even runs a second time later in the day. My husband started saying, all's right with the world, whenever we see her run by. It's such a lovely expression that some of you may be familiar with from the first line that says, God is in his heaven, all is right with the world. So when I see her each day, those words just come naturally to my mind. It's become almost like a prayer that reminds me that all is well in God's world. There is perfect harmony for us when we remember that we live in the spirit of our God, the spirit of the living God, which we sometimes sing, asking to fall afresh on me, to melt me, to mold me, to heal me, and to use me. Today, we need those words and to rely on our faith as we face many challenges. Challenges are nothing new to God, <laughs> nothing new in God's universe. Let's take an example of a 2,000-year challenge that faced both Jews and Christians. Back in those days, 2,000 years ago, when they began to harmonize two faiths, together. Religious beliefs, philosophies, this was the challenge of the day. Let's take a listen now to the scripture. 
which takes into account both the Old Testament of the Jews, the New Testament of the early Christians, and then I'll speak of the now by looking at our practice of faith. I'm reading this morning from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, which he wrote while he was in prison, chapter 4, verses 17 through 25. The title is Unity in the Body of Christ and the Old Life and the New. Now this I affirm and insist on in the Lord. You must no longer live as Gentiles live in the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of their ignorance and hardness of heart. They have lost all sensitivity and have abandoned themselves to licitiousness, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. That is not the way you learned in Christ, for surely you have heard about him, and you were taught in him as truth is in Jesus. You were taught to put away your former life, your old self, corrupt and deluded by its lusts, and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to clothe yourselves with new, with new self, created according to the likeness of God, in true righteousness and holiness. So then, putting away falsehood, let us all speak the truth to our neighbor, for we are members of one another. Here ends the reading. Paul had a heavy task in front of him, as God had hardened the hearts of many of the people in order to make room to bring Gentiles, Christians, into the fold of the new church in Jesus. He only hardened them for a while, and in our reading today, he is addressing the unity, or shall I say, the harmony that can be among them, even with their differences, and that once those new Christians, those new ones, who had accepted Christ, became accepted into the old church, their tasks between the Christians and the Jews was to figure out ways to live in harmony. Not unlike our own days, God's people of the early Christian church were called to find and live in harmony amidst their differences. I looked up this word harmony as I'm off to do when I'm writing a sermon. I like to get definitions in my own mind. I looked up the word harmony and that the, I saw that the first reference was a musical one. I'm sure that does not surprise anybody. We know a lot about harmonizing with music. And it's defined as the combination of simultaneously sounded musical notes to produce chords and chord progressions having a pleasing effect. Synonyms for this word harmony include congruence, agreement, accord, tranquility. And this is the definition that I put in italics on your paper there. It was an interweaving of different accounts into a single narrative. It's where I hope to focus this morning. This work does indeed continue to play, actively play in our role in our lives today as we are being asked to harmonize anew in the midst of very divisive times in our country and in our world. But that's not what I want to talk about. I don't want to talk about divisions in the country and in the world by listing them all listing the many ways that be, we're being asked to reconcile what seem like opposite sides. I want to speak about harmony within us. Harmony within us in God and in God's church with our families and our friends. And like my photos may have shown you, harmony with the natural world. There is an expression that says, all music jazz when the soul is out of tune. We all know that the pandemic has highlighted the need for each and every one of us in each and every church 
to figure out how to best understand what's going on, how to protect ourselves and our loved ones from COVID. But opinions vary, and divisions widen right outside these doors. But here in the sanctuary, here inside these walls, in God's house, we take time to pause and to wonder and to pray to our God and to breathe and to invite God's spirit to fall afresh on us, to soften our hearts. We come here to be refreshed. We come here to be renewed and to be reminded of what it is that brings us all together. I'd like to use an example of uh, differences and similarities between the Jewish holy days, the Jewish holy days that they celebrate a new year in September and in early October, because today finds us on the heels of the holy days of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. I'd like to take a look at some of the differences and then some of the similarities between the Jewish roots and our own Christian roots of the newness of life that Paul speaks about in our scripture. Although our practices may vary dramatically, our opinions and our traditions vary, we arrive at a similar place. My friend is Jewish. After wishing her a happy Rosh Hashanah a few weeks back, I asked her some questions about how this holy day, which is the anniversary of the creation of Adam and Eve and emphasizes the special relationship between God and humanity, is actually practiced today. She told me that throughout the 10 days of awe, which is repentance, leading up to Yom Kippur, those practicing Judaism have been reflecting on the personal as their personal aspects of the past year, deciding how to improve, seek forgiveness, and show compassion to others. Traditionally, the belief is that after judging a person by their deeds over the last year, God decides who will be sealed in the book of life to live for another year and who will die. After taking 10 days of a personal assessment of their life at Yom Kippur, amends are made. It is considered by some the, en the end of the year cleansing. They gather in community and they recite a list of prayer, a list of sins, as well as ask for forgiveness for what they have not done. And they ask for forgiveness in unity through special chanting prayers. After Yom Kippur comes the celebration of the harvest, which the Hebrews named Sukkot, which is an expression that means huts, booths, or personal tents. The feast commemorates how our ancestors, theirs and ours, dwelled in Sukkot, tents, upon leaving Egypt while traveling through the wilderness before living in the promised land. In contrast, in Christianity, our holy days center around the events in Christ's life. Our process begins with the transfiguration of Jesus, followed by Ash Wednesday and followed by a season of Lent, a season of Lent in which we repent, in which we are asked to sacrifice something special in our lives so that we too might understand Jesus' sacrifice a little bit better each year. The word repent used in both Judaism and Christianity, means turn around. We're asked to turn around our lives. We're asked to turn around some of our opinions. Maybe we're asked to open our hearts to different ways of living. 
Weeks later, Holy Week begins with Palm Sunday as Jesus made his triumphant entry into Jerusalem, followed as we celebrate Maundy Thursday and Jesus' last supper with his disciples, his arrest, his crucifixion, and his death, and then his glorious resurrection, which we celebrate on Easter Sunday. During these Christian holy days, a holy week, as we call it, we are given the opportunity to examine our lives, to repent or turn around from our sins, and through his ultimate sacrifice to believe that our sins are forgiven. Some people have a challenge understanding the word sin in contemporary language. For some, it's more... Um, comforting to use the word separation from God, you know, because that's what sin is. It is a separation from God. We're called into community to celebrate this new life, this new life that is given to us in Christ when we forget, confess our transgressions and we hear his words of assurance when we celebrate his last supper with our communion service. We do so in community. We pray through Good Friday and Holy Saturday as we await together his resurrection on Easter morning. So you can see that although we have two distinct ways that we confess, repent, atone, and begin anew in Judaism and Christianity, we are still harmonizing these practices and here comes that definition again, into interweaving of different accounts into a single narrative, a single story. Although our practices may vary, our Jewish brothers and sisters do celebrate along with us new life, another year to love and serve and praise God. Perhaps our challenge today is to look at these two very different approaches to these actions of sin, atonement, forgiveness, and celebration as harmonized in that they both conclude, they both conclude with this opportunity, a new life again and again. As the famous writer and theologian and member of the Jesus Papers, Marcus Borg says, meeting Jesus again for the very first time. We interweave different accounts into a single narrative. Both traditions observe a lengthy process towards hope and assurance for a promised future, but not without looking back. As a church, I would say, you are looking back. As you look for your new settled pastor, you've been reflecting on your identity as a church. You've been reflecting on the mission and the calling of your church. You've been making decisions on what to bring forward, what to leave behind. Your collective values and traditions as you discern your leaders for the future. Who will walk with you, sometimes ahead of you, sometimes alongside of you, sometimes to the rear, encouraging you all to take the lead. It is too soon to know, but signs are encouraging that your process is moving forward. In the meantime, while we wait, in that liminal space that I spoke about last week, I pray that you will continue to discern what you envision for your church that you will greet God each new day with a prayer for just a tiny glimpse of God's vision for your church, God's vision for the Federated Church of Norfolk. And who knows, maybe, just maybe, you too will hear the birds singing. May God add blessing to our hearing and understanding of these words today. Amen.
As we come to our time of prayer with one another and before God this morning, we're asked to pray for family and friends of Charlie Jones. And these flowers came from his family. Charlie passed away peacefully on Saturday, October 16th, at the age of 96. I was blessed to officiate at Charlie's funeral this past week. And um, um, I must say, he was a bit of an amazing man. <laughs> Let me just put it that way. <laughs> How many of you knew Charlie? Yeah, many of you, many of you. Uh, science teacher, veteran, antique car collector, builder, uh, uh, amazing. 96 years, uh, he, he filled them very full. Um, Charlie had two wives in his lifetime. He, he lost his beloved Nancy after many years of marriage and two sons, and then he married another lovely woman um, and uh, named Gloria, I believe. And Georgia, yeah. And, um, and with each of those wives, he traveled the country, and uh, the adventures that they had are still spoken of today fondly by their children. And um, I would say that on Charlie's headstone, which he shares with his first wife, um, at the bottom of it says, off on another adventure. <laughs> <laughs> so those of you who knew Charlie, kn you know, knew, knew him in that way as well. We are also asked to pray for Carol Hansel, who is experiencing swelling and pain in her arms and wrists. It's being treated in a way that was successful seven years ago. Please pray that it will work again to remove the pain and promote healing. As well, there is a, a, a prayer offering in your bulletin which has an update. So, uh, Wendy Cantoregis, friend Mick, uh, he remains hospitalized. The update, it says, um, because it has been a struggle to get him off the ventilator, surgery was done to put in a tracheotomy. This will provide less risk for pneumonia. Please continue to pray for Mick, his wife Sue, and their three children. And please keep Wendy and other friends in, and family in your prayers. As well, uh, Karen Bell has asked that we pray for Tom Boynton, Tom, Tom Boynton, who passed of cancer on October 10th of this year. Are there others to be lifted in prayer this morning? Oh, yes, 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 a little boy, little boy. I saw another hand. Ralph suffering with prostate cancer. Yes. Oh, yeah. Your nephew, stage four cancer. John. Yes, Grace. Your cousin uh, Erica, her, her, her uncle Eric has Hodgkin's, cancer. has cancer. Yeah, we'll keep him in our prayers. Her What's her name? Nancy Evanson's daughter. Mm -hmm. she has a brain tumor. Has a brain tumor. We have several Roy's and a Ray, right? <laughs> Welcome back. Welcome back, Roy. Glad to be there. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> I bet. As we come to a time of silent prayer now, you've heard the prayers spoken aloud. I invite you in this time of silence to go inside with all of your prayers as well praying for knowledge of God's will for you, praying for a softened heart as we journey together,
praying for your needs, your own families, your own friends. So let us be in silence together. Holy and precious Lord, coming to you in our time of prayer this morning, we've offered joys and sorrows. We know that you are a listening God, and we know that you have different answers for different prayers. God, we put our faith and our trust and our hope in you, that as you listen, you would discern the direction of our lives, that you would help to discern the direction of this, one of your beloved churches, that you would remind us all that we come from deeper roots, much deeper roots, Faith is much older than any of us can even count. So God, we trust and we rely on your goodness and your mercy to hear our prayers this day. For you are the giver of all life, and again, you are the giver of all new life. May we continue to walk in harmony with one another reminded that we are all, as I am likened to say, just walking each other home. Remind us of the fellowship that we share here, the trust and the love and the support that we hold in one another. Help us to hold each other in prayer as discernment continues, as new leaders step forth, as we walk together in faith, knowing that you gather us in. Each and every Sunday morning, we gather together and offer our prayers to you. And when we leave the blessedness of this sanctuary, we know that you walk with us. In fact, we know that you carry us. So God, we thank you, we praise you, and we offer all these words in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. closing hymn is, is one that I requested, so I'm delighted that we can sing this together as we speak about vision and we speak about the new life and the new creation. We ask that for God to be our vision. Thank you.
around you and may the pure light within you guide all of our way home. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.